are awfully slightly down about just over two points. What are your thoughts on expectations, at least for the session? James always saw a bit of a mixed lead coming through from offshore markets with a bit of strength in European markets but some weakness in the US. It does look like the Australian market is going to see some losses today. We saw the US market down by 0.2% and in particular we saw losses from those stocks which are growth related. So we did see a sell off in growth and that doesn't bode too well for our commodity based stocks today. In fact it was the defensives which outperformed on the US markets. Also a little bit more focus on Europe once again. We saw the Spanish and Italian bond yields ticking back upwards, the 10-year bond yields at the highest level in around about a month. But if we have a look at commodities, a little bit of a mixed read. We saw gold and copper in New York slightly higher, but London's metals exchange, base metals there mostly lower. And of course, our metals uh, and our mining stocks are going to be watching the China numbers coming out today, the China flash PMI numbers, given that we've seen so much focus on Chinese growth coming through uh, in the last couple of weeks. Oil price Prices though did manage a gain up by 1.1 percent and we did see U.S. stockpile data showing a decrease so that was a positive for oil prices and this morning we've heard quite a bit of news out as well. Ostar has um, announced the second court date over the uh, Foxtel takeover so it does look like that's been pushed back from the 3rd of April uh, to the 5th of April now and Blue Scope also coming out with a reorganization so it looks like it's going to be a busy day in terms of corporate news but in terms of the market it looks like the material sector will be the one in focus. Look as you say a little bit of news floating around the market Sigma obviously coming out with their results the NPAT coming in around 50 million dollars what did you make of the numbers? James this is the best performing stock of 2011 in the top 200 if we have a look at Sigma shares last year they were up by a massive 122 percent and this is a real turnaround story Sigma sold off Arrow Pharmaceuticals which it paid too much for in 2005 paid off a large chunk of its debt and concentrated on its remaining businesses and it does look like it's paid off it's gone from a loss of 235 million dollars to now a profit of 49 million dollars now it was slightly below what we were expecting we were expecting a number of 55 million dollars but of course their dividend payment much higher than what the market was expecting what we were expecting we we're expecting to see a dividend payment of one cent they've actually come in with a dividend of two cents and not only that a special dividend of one cent so that should help to support the shares today however 2012 is not without risks for Sigma it will see a price increase uh, I'm sorry a price cut of a, an average of 23 percent across 200 of its drugs because of changes to the pharmaceutical benefits scheme in 2012. So Sigma Pharmaceutical coming out with a good result today and that dividend likely to help support the shares. We just saw the share price uh, this year. It's as you say look it's, it's run it's run pretty hard. It was as you said the, the best performer last year but wasn't it one of the worst performers the year before so it probably couldn't go much sort of lower. Is it too late Julie to, to jump on board Sigma or do you still see some potential upward movement? I think it was, it's been a positive turnaround year and turnaround stories are very difficult to hit. It's almost mm. like kissing a thousand uh, frogs to try and find Prince Charming but <laughs> Sigma has managed it over the last year. But having a look at the share price and if we have a look at the year's share price it doesn't look too bad. In fact it's been a fantastic performance but it's when you convert to a five year chart that you see exactly how much volatility there has been and how negative the share price looks over that five year period. So it has been a rocky ride. Uh, there, there has been some pretty tense moments for shareholders when they wondered whether Sigma would be able to uh, at, uh, would be able to survive its debt burden but I guess the, the sale of Arrow uh, the concentration on its remaining businesses has seen this turnaround but of course looking at the next year there will be challenges and when you see your price the prices of uh, your drugs being mandatory cut or it is a key challenge for the business and that's going to be the big challenge for Sigma pharmaceuticals across 200 of its drug a compulsory average cut of about 23 percent coming through from the government that's going to be uh, quite difficult to manage. What about the, the space in general obviously the, a lot of people focus on the likes of Ramsey obviously CSL there and so forth defensive not surprisingly saw some favor during you know the depths of, of, of risk appetite do you see it remaining in favour? I mean, is it an area that you like? 
Well, if we have a look at the share market cycle, uh, last year was one, of course, where we did see the market losing around about 15%. So when you do see a risk-off environment like that, it is the defensive stocks which do outperform. We saw uh, telecom sector the best performing last year, mm. utilities, and of course the other defensive spaces on the Australian market are the healthcare and the consumer staples area. So very much a year in which we saw defensives outperform. 2012 has been a little bit different from 2011. We have seen uh, a lot more positives this year. We've seen Europe fading to the background especially the uh, the possibility of a Greek disorderly default we've seen some better numbers coming out of the US although the focus has been on China and the lower rates of growth that it is forecasting there so 2012 is a better year in terms of growth stocks so I guess those defensives unlikely to see the same type of performance that we saw in 20 and 2011 and investors probably looking to shift some of their money from those high yielding area defensives slowly into some of those value stocks and the growth stocks as well so I think 2012 will be a year of transition from those defensives into more growth orientated stocks but the transition of course isn't uh, transition isn't always smooth and we'll probably see a bit of a rocky transition this year and look just finally what about gold I mean where does that fit in obviously uh, traditionally a bit, a bit of a, a safe haven but at the same time when people start talking about QE3 people start liking gold again but obviously that's come off a little bit in terms of expectations and it fits in with uh, a gold stock actually coming out with its full year numbers today if we have a look at uh, gold versus gold stocks, there, there has been quite a bit of uh, difference in terms of performance. If we have a look at gold prices in New York prices, the prices have been quite bearish over the last month, down by 7%. But if you compare it to the gold stock index here in Australia, it's performed much worse, down by a massive 16%. And we're seeing the same type of trend with gold stocks overseas as well. In fact, if we have a look at the US gold sector, that's turned quite bearish as well, uh, breaking an important support level. So if we have a look at gold stocks, they have been underperforming the market over the last month and the gold prices over the last month as well. So it's been quite a difficult environment for these gold miners. Mm -hmm. Alasa has come out with its full year result today. Now this is a gold miner which of course came about from the merger of Avoca Resources as well as Canada's Anatolia. And uh, the exciting thing for this company has been its copper mine in uh, Turkey which started processing in 2011 and it's been seeing some strong results coming through there. Now it has come out with a profit result of $75 million so a turnaround from the loss that we saw of $38 million in its previous result. It is a full year result but given Given the strong levels of production that we've been seeing from its copper mine, I think the market was expecting to see more from this company. If we have a look at its 2011 production target, it was at 405,000 uh, ounces of gold. It actually managed to beat that at 412 thousand ounces of gold and yet the profit result coming in below expectations its longer term targets are to be producing about 800,000 ounces of gold per annum at an average gold cost of 500 uh, US an ounce and they're, they're trying to hit that target by about 2015 so a very exciting company but unfortunately the profit result actually coming in a little bit below expectations and if we have a look at gold stocks in general looking quite bearish especially given the underperformance that we've seen in the gold sector compared to the gold price it does look like there's quite a bit, bit of bearish sentiment in this area